morning. Welcome to our time together with the Lord, and may He speak to our hearts and just remind us of His love. The Sugarloaf Mountain rises nearly 400 meters or 1300 feet above sea level directly out of the Atlantic Ocean, which surrounds it on three sides. It takes two cable car rides to get to the top. And if you happen to be there in the late afternoon, you can look west and you can see the sunset behind Corcovada, on top of which is the magnificent statue of Christ the Redeemer. Corcovada is about 300 meters or 1,000 feet higher than the sugar loaf, and so you look up to it into the setting sun. What a sight! And it's much easier to get to the top of Corcovada than it is to get to the top of the sugar loaf. You can hike, you can go through the forest on the paths that are there, or you can drive, you can get a taxi or an Uber, or you can go on a rack railway. And that's quite an experience as you get hauled up that very steep slope. And when you're on the top from, of Corcovado, you look down and you see Rio all around you. It's really right in the center of that city. You see the beautiful beaches of Copacabana and Ipanema. You see the suburbs. You see a stadium and you see the slums of Rio or some of them. And Corcovado itself rises out of the Tijuca Forest. It's a reforested Atlantic rainforest within the city limits. And as you travel through it, you'll be watched by the capuchin monkeys as you travel. They almost look like monkeys that are hippies with their ginger hair on their faces. And looking around every structure and every clearing and every trail or path has become overgrown by the jungle and it struck me that the jungle fights back the jungle takes over those things that are not tended buildings from the old coffee farms and the slave quarters that were established on that on that mountain as they cleared the forest uh, are there and trees are growing out through them and branches coming out through windows. I want to read to you some verses from Genesis chapter 3. And man has sinned, Adam and Eve have sinned, and the serpent has been cursed, and Eve has heard of her the consequences of her sin. And God says, and it says in verse 17, it says, To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree, about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field, and by the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken and dust you are and dust you will become and that's something else god has just told eve the consequences of her disobedience and he speaks to adam he says the earth will produce thorns and thistles there will be weeds it's going to be hard to grow your cabbages there will be weeds and you're going to have to labor in those fields. It's by the sweat of your brow that you will eat your food. And it will not only be the battle of the weeds that you will be fighting, but ultimately the cycle will be complete as you return to the ground. And so our lives have become a constant in. A fight, a constant conflict against the incursion of the jungle. It's like that in our spiritual lives. There is the original sin. We have committed ourselves to Jesus and we seek to serve him. But Satan fights back just as the jungle does. Satan fights back. He sows tears amongst the wheat. He tries to make us unfruitful so that we will have to 
tend the vineyard, pull out the weeds, clean up our patch as we seek only Jesus and his righteousness. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So you've got to challenge the weeds. You've got to face up to the fact that there are weeds to be pulled. And I just pray that you will be strong and bold in doing so, decisive in following the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your warning. We thank you for the encouragement that comes from your word to our hearts that today you will be with us. Today you will give us the strength. We used to sing, strength for today is mine all the way and all that I need for tomorrow. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness and all I have to do is follow. And so we come, Lord Jesus, and we worship you and we serve you and we follow you. And we rejoice, Lord, that you renew our strength even as we wait upon you. And so bless us, we pray in your name. Amen. God bless you as you go. And I'm encouraging the folks who listen to these uh, devotionals and, and are blessed by them to share that blessing as you forward it to friends and family and, and have others listening in as well. So God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh